this episode, it's the end of an era. I want the cliffs and I want the sunset. There's something about these rocks, so I'm gonna have to keep wiping this to keep it clean. Anyway, I wonder what Amanda's doing in the camper. How about a banana? Oh, a ban oh God. Well, I'm starting to get those feelings. We've got no excuse, really, it's sunset. You've got all day to get there, haven't you? Do you know what? I feel like a real man now, love, because because I changed a bulb. That's where I should have stood. I'll know for next time. Well, it's 7 p.m. and I've actually had a full night's sleep, but I still have a face like Jeff Bezos gagging on a gobstopper. But I'm quite happy because look at this business. I've got this beautiful sunset happening way up here in the very, very north highlands of Nova Scotia. And I'm quite excited. Oh, have you uh, subscribed yet? No? Go on, tickle that bell. And I think I'll probably be a little bit too late for the actual sunset sidelight, but I might be just in time for the afterglow, which is, if you've seen my videos before, you'll know that I prefer. Oh, look at these rock formations. This is the problem when you arrive at somewhere you've never been before and the light's kicking off and you, you know you're wasting precious minutes trying to find the ideal vantage point. But I think I need to be either there or over on that ridge there looking back in the opposite direction just, just to get something interesting in my foreground. But look at these beautiful waves. Some nice color to the water as well. So I'm excited, but I'm also a little bit annoyed, as always, that I didn't come here half an hour earlier, and then I'd already know where I need to be. I would have scoped out the most interesting shapes and rock formations. I just look at that business. The other thing is, it looked like there were a lot of birds on that rock in the far distance. I don't know what they were. Do you call that a rookery? Simon would know. Put, post a comment, Simon. I know, I know you'll be watching this. Let me know what the correct terminology is for that collection of birds on that cliff. And of course, I don't want to get in trouble. You know, being on YouTube, you know, you do anything. Some people don't like it. So I don't want to upset the birds. Maybe it's a nesting cliff rookery. Is that what they're called? I don't know. I don't want to get into trouble, do I? So. I'll go in the opposite direction here, just away from those birds. But this is already looking better, actually. Look at this business down here. So, yeah, yeah, this is what I'm after. All right, I think I found my spot. There's the sun setting, <laughs> absolutely gorgeous. And then I've got this foreground area in here, but I don't know if it's going to be wide enough to be able to fit in these cliffs. I want the cliffs and I want the sunset. Maybe I can fit it all in one frame with the 14 millimeter. So I will stop gabbing, get my camera out as it's just about time. But as the saying goes, time waits for no man. As soon as I set up my camera, the sun disappeared behind a massive cloud. But I did manage to rattle off a couple of quick test shots just before it faded off uh, and to be quite honest I wasn't blown away with those compositions because I was still hunting and it's kind of challenging because let me just show you switch hands here I have kind of a, a clash of directions here so the interesting coastline is straight north which is nice but that doesn't really line up that well with the setting sun in the west and then if you look are all of these really cool rock formations here. There's something about these rocks that has them pointing west, southwest. So none of the directions of the interesting components work together. They're all at odds with one another. So I don't know if this shot that I just shot there is going to work, but the light was quite nice. So it might be all right, but if it did turn out to be all right, here's a shot. with this but if 
only I'd been there 10 minutes earlier, I would have got a slightly less crap shot. So what I think I'll do is just stick around for the afterglow now. So the sun is setting over those mountains over there. You can just see, see it going down. And who knows, I might get lucky and those clouds just might go all kinds of colors. The only problem is there are no clouds in that direction where the interesting coastline is. Lots over there towards the south southwest so maybe I could rearrange my composition, but there's, there's nothing in the center of the frame for that. So I, I don't know what my chances are, but I'll, I'll wait it out. And then my other sort of plan B for this location, I don't know if I'll do it tonight, was to get over in that direction facing, not well, I would be in the northerly point of the point looking south, because then I might be able to frame up a, a galactic core Milky Way shot looking this way. And I know it's going to be fairly decent tonight, so I don't, I don't know if I'll stay up that late tonight, but it's just something nice to have in my back pocket for a plan B. Now, I don't know about you, but whenever I'm waiting for that last blush of colour in the sky during sunset, I like to read a copy of Chasing Awe with Gavin Hardcastle. It's almost sold out entirely, and to be quite honest with you, I don't know what I'm going to go on about once these have completely gone. I guess I could always go on about the fabulous ebook version, which is much more affordable because of the lack of shipping costs. There's a link to both versions in the description. But yeah, I mean, it's almost gone, and then when it's gone, I won't be doing any more of these silly gags, which will be kind of sad, won't it? Yeah. Unless. Unless I write another book. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll get on that. Yeah. It's expensive though, printing books, so, you know, might need a bit of cash up front, so. <laughs> There's a link in the description below. It really will be the end of an era when that book has gone. As they say, nothing lasts forever. Well, that's it. it it's a bust. Um, the light did not erupt. I didn't think there was much chance of it, to be quite honest with you. But you've got to wait, haven't you? You've got to try. And I tried, and uh, it didn't work out. But, uh, I mean, you guys do say that you uh, want to see my failures as well as my successes. So, this is another one of those failures, you know. Uh, but I'm going to go back to the camper, have some terrible dinner, and then bed down for the night. Get an early night, and then try and get up early in the morning for some kind of sunrise or something. I don't know what. But I need to redeem myself after this abject failure. Anyway, I wonder what Amanda's doing in the camper. Mm. Probably reading a copy of Chasing All. <laughs> oh, she won't be. Yeah, I don't know if she won't. Still hasn't paid for her copy. What a discount. I said you could f*** right off. No, I'm only joking. I gave her 35% off. I just found this epic sea stack in this beautiful cove here on my way out after the light's done. So, so that's the only thing that I'm gonna teach you in this video. The only lesson to be learned here is don't be like me. Show up half an hour earlier if you can. We've got no excuse really, it's sunset. You've got all day to get there, haven't you? But somehow <laughs> I'm always late. Oh, there you go. That's where I should have stood. I'll know for next time. And so I shambled back down to the camper where Amanda was keeping warm and cosy. Hi. Hiya. We found a place to park up and spend the night. And before we knew it, it was time for breakfast. Well, it's the morning after the night before, after last night's failed sunset shoot. And we camped down on the beach and it was a glorious night. It, all that we heard was just crashing waves. And oh, what, what better sleep could you have than that? Anyway, I'm devouring my uh, quite foul breakfast. Uh, it's this apple cinnamon oatmeal, which I made the mistake of buying the, the high protein version, and it is c quite horrible. Uh, but my coffee is, is absolutely wonderful this morning. Oh. Good morning, love. Good morning. We're a few hours from home, so we're gonna head south, just see what we see. And then I guess we're going to do a Home Depot run because we need a whole bunch of lights for the church. 
Lighting, light it up, light it up. <laughs> we're at we're at a critical phase of our renovation right now. You won't probably get to see it on Hardcastle Towers for months because we've still got videos that are filmed from last year that need to be edited. And the reason why you guys haven't seen us regularly every week like it used to be, like clockwork, is because of this reno and we just have to be there all the time. There's all these little details. And we're really hands on right now doing lots. We're doing lots of work. We're, we're painting the whole thing ourselves which is really time consuming, but it's gonna save us a bunch of money. And uh, you're gonna sand the floors? Yeah, we're gonna sand the floors next week. So it's all these little jobs uh, that, that we just have to get done so that we can move in as soon as possible. And then once we've moved in, then we get our lives back and the videos will start to be a bit more regular. And we can go far. Yeah, we can go on long trips. We can we can leave the country and go on trips. Yeah. That'll be so nice just to, just to get out of Canada for a little while, go and see me mum, you know. I haven't seen her in years, due to the obvious. What are you having for breakfast, love? I'd like a banana. A banana? Yeah. Oh, well, you're in luck. Here you go. There's a there's a banana there. Yeah. What do you want for breakfast? Well, I'd, I'd like a full English breakfast. How about a banana? Oh, a ban oh God, go on then. Uh, uh, cheers. <laughs> Let's go for a walk on the beach. Oh, nice. You just can't beat breakfast coffee on the beach when you're the only people there. Well, I missed the sunrise. I haven't got any shots. But it's a glorious morning. <laughs> I, I actually feel quite happy about it because I, I, it's rare for me to get a good sleep like that. So I needed that, obviously. Yeah. I just don't know what I'm going to shoot. Maybe, maybe there'll be some nice waterfall on the way home. There's a really posh looking hotel over there where I bet we could probably get a Michelin star breakfast, but you can't beat coffee on the beach, can you? No, you can't. And a high protein oatmeal. Well, you're, this is your favorite coffee ever, so they couldn't beat that, but they could probably give us a good breakfast. Yeah, they probably could. Yeah, I did look at the website and it, it did, did look top notch. Yeah. Yeah. Is it actually open? It looked very expensive, so it's probably closed. Well, I'm starting to get those feelings. Me too. No, I mean, you know, I have to go to the camper and uh, pay a visit. Me too. Oh. <laughs> well, we can't both go at the same time, can we? <laughs> so we got back on the road and travelled south, where we had a ferry to catch. In fact, this could be the fastest ferry ride in the world. So we've just made it onto the English Town Ferry. And I've never been on this ferry before, but it looks like it travels a distance of about 100 feet. <laughs> <laughs> it basically, I don't know if you can see it, but way off in the distance there is the coastline. And when you're driving south, you can either go all the way along that coastline and then up here, or you could just take this ferry and you're across. I'm, I'm going to guess we cross this in about 60 seconds. But I think we're moving. Yeah, we're almost across. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we're looking at. So this would be a fun job every day, back and forth. Well, that's why she was so smiley. She's yeah. got a pretty sweet job. How much time do you think this saves you? Oh, that's going to save you at least 45 minutes. How often have we got to a ferry and then immediately got on? Never. Thank you. That was the fastest ferry ride in my entire life. And I've been on a few ferries. That was brilliant. Now that we've done that, I'm never driving around there again. Like that is brilliant. But as soon as we hit the highway, the big rig needed some mechanical attention before it became a big problem. So a couple of people have told me that uh, my signal and brake lights aren't working on the right side. So I went to a trusty old Canadian tyre, got a couple of spare bulbs. Let's see if these work. So I'll put the one that is still working back in, which is this one. That one's still good. So now we just need to 
that was the one that fried. So he said it was the 57, right? Fragile little buggers, aren't oh, they? Oh, they are fragile, yeah. Keep the packaging as well, because we'll, yeah. we'll need to store the other one. Okay, let's see. Let's put that in. Oh, that's bright, hey? Oh, that doesn't fit. Yeah, it does. It does if you put it in the right way around. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see. Let's see. Let you me want just... me to start the car? Well, I'll just, I'll put the lights on. Yeah. Oh, nice. It's working. But shouldn't that one, shouldn't that one flash? Or is that just, that's just when I hit the brakes, right? Yeah. Okay, brilliant. So let's, let's put the covers on and test it again one more time. So this got to go on the, on the outside because it's the, it's the blinkery. Yeah, I'll just get you to jump in and uh, start her up and then just hit the brakes and then the signals. Okay. Right. Yeah, that looks good. I think I might have put them on the wrong way around. I think I need to put that one on there. I put the covers back on the wrong way around. This this has got to go on there. But the bulb's right. But the bulb's good, yes. So the problem has been fixed, which is extremely good news, because otherwise, if you can't fix it yourself, well, then you've got to pay somebody to fix it, haven't you? And we've done enough of that. Do you know what? I feel like a real man now, love, cause, because I changed the bulb. I feel kind of manly. You know, I, I, I think I could strip an engine now for a tricycle. Right, that's that's the way it should have been, I think. I think I should have done it like that, because that's what it's like on the other side. You know, you, you learn as you go, don't you, love? Yeah. You live and learn. Live and learn. Like, by next year, I should be a genius with the year we've had. Oh, absolutely. I mean, all the skills you've learned, almost done, almost there. I could work for an RV repair company, I think, after this. Good. Yeah. Right, I'll go and try it this time. Left. Right. Yeah. Oh. Bring your repair needs to <laughs> Hardcastle RV Repairs. No guarantees. That's all you can do. Yeah, I can change your bulbs, that's it. <laughs> right, should we uh, hit the road again? Yeah. What are we doing now? we got to get lights at Home Depot. All oh, right, Home Depot. Uh, uh, you can have a nap in the car. That is a brilliant idea. But then you don't know what I'm going to get. That is a terrible idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Home Depot. After a very expensive stop at Home Depot to pick up some lights, I managed to squeeze in one more photo shoot just for you guys. All right, so I'm going to try and redeem myself after what I consider to be a failed shoot there. I really wasn't too blown away with that shot. I think the location's got a lot of potential, but the light just didn't work out. So I'm going to try and get a half decent shot today just to make up for that, that lack of performance. And I'm back at this waterfall that I shot a couple of months ago during the very depths of winter. And I was really happy with the shot that I got. Here is the shot that I got just a couple of months ago. And so I'm back here again in early spring conditions. So it should be a little bit safer getting down to the waterfall, but it might not be as dramatic without all that beautiful ice and snow that I had a couple of months ago. But it does look, it's look quite good. So I think there's a chance I might get a good shot here. really pretty I'm, I'm quite happy with this I think I might be able to get a good shot and I'm not even gonna try and be original I'm just gonna go back into the middle of the river and pretty much reshoot the shot that I got before when I had all that ice again without the ice just to see what the difference is but I do actually have a, another motive here today which you're gonna see in the next episode next week whereby I'm actually comparing my new camera phone to my expensive mirrorless camera just to see if phones are yet viable options for landscape photographers but in this video for the rest of this video i'm just going to show you the shot that i capture with the sony camera 
just to actually try and finish off this video with a half decent shot. Okay, so let me explain this composition that I've framed up. I really like this, but unfortunately by the time I found it, it started to pour down. So you can see my camera is drenched and this is a very bulbous 14 to 24 millimeter lens onto which I cannot attach a CPL. You know me, if I could, I'd have a CPL on this, but I can't. Anyway, so I'm gonna have to keep wiping this to keep it clean. So here's my composition. I've cut off the top of the waterfall. The reason why I often do that is because I like to add that element of mystery. I like it when you look at a waterfall and you don't know where it's coming from or where it's going. You just get this little slice of the, the action somewhere in the, the center of the waterfall. So I've cut off the top. Now the three by two, because you're looking at a 16 by nine, does have a little bit more of that. So you've seen an exaggerated version of it, but the same idea. And of course it's tumbling over these rocks here, down into the foreground. And I love this rock that I've got in a foreground here. So you can see there's three elements to this shot. The main cascade, this little tumble over the rocks, and then this cool little foreground rock here. So of course, I'm gonna focus stack this. I'm gonna shoot one focus point on that, take that shot, another one here, take that shot, and then another one on the background and just blend those together. I didn't need that focus stack because I preferred this four to two crop and I hope you enjoy it too. Well, I hope that you enjoyed today's video. Didn't start out that great with that sunset, but I think I rescued it with this shot here. And if you want to see that video where I compare this 50 megapixel, very expensive professional level camera to the 50 megapixel camera on my phone, which I think is a camera that most people have in their pockets, tune into next week's video and see that comparison. So please hit the old like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.